why this is important is that every once in a while, I mean, there's a lot of reasons why it's important besides just being doctrinal and biblical, what, you know, the meaning of this. Uh, there's a few things that come up oftentimes out soul winning. And this isn't one of the topics that comes up, I would say, very frequently, but occasionally it does come up. And I always want to start off with this because I want to give you a tip or a pointer on how to deal with this when if you go to the door and someone, you ask somebody, you know for sure you die today, you're going to heaven, right? And then they say yes, and they ask why. If they give you the right answer, right? They say, well, because I believe in Jesus or something to that effect, right? Um, when you follow up with, usually what you do is you follow up with asking them about eternal security. Well, is there any way you could lose it? Every once in a while, you'll get someone that says, well, if you blaspheme the Holy Ghost, then you can lose it. Now, that shows me, first of all, right away, that they're not just completely ignorant of Scripture. They've heard stuff before. They've at least, you know, heard his talk. Now, they may have a misunderstanding of what this is really talking about, but I don't always assume that that person's unsaved. I think people can just get a little bit confused on that because at least there's some type of scripture, and we see it's very powerful what the what the Bible says about you know whoever blasphemes the Holy Ghost is that they don't have any forgiveness in this world, neither in the world to come. And it's just like point blank, like that's a fact. So if someone looks at that and they don't quite understand what it means, and they go, Well, I mean I know if I blaspheme the Holy Ghost that I don't have eternal life because it's pretty clear. If that's their reason, and that's like their only reason, I usually will try to explain then you know, kind of what this passage means. Or before I even go into explaining that, what I prefer to do is ask a few more follow-up questions is, well, is there anything else that you could do? Right? Just to make sure they're not trusting in the law, trusting in anything else for their salvation. Now, obviously, it's wrong to think that a believer can lose their salvation. That's incorrect. That's not what this verse is teaching. But if that is the only thing they come up with, I'm not going to say, oh, that person wasn't saved. You just try to expound it then unto them. And usually what I do, like I said, I try to, to just make sure, first of all, is there anything else? And I'll just bring up an example and just say, well, what if, uh, you know, what if someone were to kill someone? Or what, you know, like, you lose it for that. And just, just kind of really make sure you, you nail it down as to what they believe. Because if they misunderstand this, before you even go and explain it, if they're already thinking they can lose their salvation for other things, it's way easier to go into why you can't lose your salvation in general, you know, why that's a works-based salvation, than it is to try to expound this one passage. Because this is a little bit deeper. This, you have to go and explain more for this then you would, um, like you don't normally teach this to someone when you're out soul winning. So if they're not saved, there's no point really going into this level of detail. But if this is the only thing they say and, and it seems pretty comfortable, like, yeah, I think this person's saved, they just don't understand this, then definitely teach them and show them this passage and what it's actually talking about. So 